There was a uh, press release that came out from none other than Pat Gelsinger at Intel, uh, you know, talking and reiterating about the company's plans for IDM 2.0 amidst uh, changing economic tides that we'll talk about later in the show. What, what, what's, what's cooking there? Yeah, so IDM 2.0 uh, is the moniker that Intel uses. So IDM is Integrated Device Manufacturer. That means you're a designer and you're a manufacturer. IDM 2.0 uh, was where, first of all, they opened up uh, IFS or they opened up their own foundry. Now, they've had foundry capabilities before, but they're they're serious about it. And they're going to spend hundreds of billions of dollars to do this, to get the scale that it takes to do leading edge nodes and uh, have the scale so your costs are low. Uh, the other part of IDM uh, 2.0 was using using other foundries in a in a bigger way. Uh, Intel had always always used other foundries, uh, particularly TSMC, but typically for less strategic silicon. Uh, you have um, you have TSMC in some of Intel's newest products uh, doing the GPU tiles, and that's a a huge shift uh, from what it was before. So, what's new? Uh, you saw for years that the company was focused on the tech and the investment. And you and I both talked to Pat Gelsinger uh, back at their Intel innovation event, and he was very clear, and he doubled down that said five nodes in four years. Okay, so that's the tech. Uh, we talk, we've talked about the funding and the hundreds of billions of dollars that um, Intel will not only invest themselves, they also are sharing risk with uh, a firm that the name uh, escapes me, and they're also um, getting money. They're about smart financing. Yeah, smart financing, and they're also getting funding from um, uh, governments, right? Chips Act in the U.S., and they're getting money in in Western Europe. So then, once you get that in place, now you have to productize it. Okay, you have to make it work in your company, and. My biggest takeaways from the memo is, first of all, uh, they've put together um, a, a, a committee uh, and they've put Stu Pan, who's um, reporting right into CFO uh, Zisner, and uh, essentially putting an even playing field between the external foundry and the internal fab. So let's say you run the client desktop business and you can choose which foundry you go to. Are you gonna use Intel internal or are you going to use TSMC or, or Samsung? So I think it's a big deal. It's actually productizing and enabling the technology, which we really hadn't heard details from before. Yeah, and, and Pat, I think we're in a moment where communications matter. Um, the market's a little spooked and Intel hasn't really benefited from when the market wasn't. It's been a really difficult time in terms of perception and it's been driven by execution. And I think Pat and his leadership team, not you, Pat, Pat Gelsinger, big, big Pat, that's how we do it yeah. when we see you two together, um, really wants to make sure that he's articulating to two, two groups, right? We've We've seen a lot of articulation to the market, but also this internal communication. You know, there's been some discussions of layoffs at Intel. It's now that you really have to unify the culture of a yeah. company and say, hey, we still believe. But not only do we believe, because I think that kind of speak has been somewhat commonplace over the last couple of years, but we have a plan. Yeah. And here is the plan. And so having a IAO or acceleration office that basically says, this is our plan. We are steadfast in executing this plan, execution reminder, and that we have personnel with great capabilities and competencies to make sure this plan stays on track, which is what everyone in the market is going to want to hear. And then, of course, um, you know, being very articulate in the benefits of this strategy, meaning yeah. the foundry fab relationship should give Intel some unique advantages, the ability to step process, the ability to expand capacity, the ability to um, you know, identify where the leadership comes from internal versus where maybe uh, process leadership might wanna come from external, and then leveraging all of those potential uh, opportunities to be successful. And then of course the company 
making sure it's clear that, hey, we've got a plan to win with our uh, internal process, with our five and five strategy, five and four, five and four strategy. Now you've got me turned around. Um, and then on top of that, you know, with the advent of, of risk, the advent of arm, the, uh, you know, saying, hey, we've got a plan to make sure that we are going to capitalize even in uh, processes that aren't uh, Intel-led design. And so the market needs to hear it, but more importantly right now, I think the employees needed to hear it. It was a good, solid, and by, by the way, brevity matters. It was brief. It was not long. It was not something that you had to spend two hours sifting through. It was quick. It was to the point. It was articulate. It was clear. And I think us as analysts and hopefully employees of Intel see it, get it, and no, and I, like everything we say with Intel, Pat, and I reiterate is proof will be in the pudding. We'll see how the execution goes, but these continued communications are promising. 